Part of my quest for the perfect Media Center playback device pretty much determined that XBMC is by far the best software. Uh, plays anything I can throw at it, even over wireless 1080p streaming. Uh, but also just has a really sweet interface with a lot of customizable skins. So in the past I've built purpose Media Center boxes based on x86 hardware that even on the cheap with many ITX cases can get fairly expensive between $250 and $300 for something nice and small. So this is the Pivos Zeos, which is an ARM-based device that's kind of standalone, all integrated. And Pivos actually hired a couple of the guys from the XBMC team to make sure that this device would play XBMC out of the box. So by, by default it has Android on it, you can see with the Android robot here, but they also have Linux firmware that boots directly into XBMC Ubuntu for Linux. So you can see it's pretty small, probably about the size of an Apple TV too, and it does come with this IR remote. Here for, here's my uh, Galaxy Note 2 for size comparison. You can see that it's, uh, you no, know, 2 is actually a little bigger, but a little thinner. So on the side here we have two USB 2.0 ports, as well as a micro SD storage. So I think that supports up to 32 gig. So if you wanted to do internal storage to play back um, your MKVs, you could do that there. Or plug in a, a USB hard drive. Also, if I just plug USB mouse into there, it works out of the box as well as a keyboard. So that's pretty nice. Um, the front we have the IR sensor that of course works with the remote. Some notifications here. And it has built in 802.11 uh, BGN, I believe, wireless. As well as uh, 10100 Ethernet, another USB port, HDMI, and power. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and boot this up. I've already got the Linux firmware flashed on it. With Android out of the box, it was uh, pretty sluggish. But that was kind of an instant on. I had it in in, res in suspend mode, as you can see when I turned it off. But I press the button, it's instant on. So here's just a flip through. Um, the stock skin was Confluence, which is uh, pretty common for XBMC. I wanted something a little flashier, so I put Aeon Knox on there. Um, Confluence was was pretty pretty snappy, as well as the uh, Zeo skin is pretty snappy, uh, but just kind of bland. So I went with Aeon Knox, and you know it's it's pretty slick. Um, it's it's pretty snappy. Some of the views, some of the specific views, can get a little sluggish. So I just chose ones that um, that weren't so sluggish. I've, I've added a source for movies, so I'll click on that one. It takes a little bit longer to load than my regular XBMC that's x86 based. So this is the view that seems to to work pretty well. Um, pretty good. I I typically like to do. Um, one of the other views this one is list I like to do showcase normally but if I switch to showcase it's it's pretty sluggish switching between these a uh, little little jittery some drop frames there actually still not bad now that I've got all the fan art cached and RAM but um, still a little sluggish if I click several times lags behind there so I just went back to the list view so let's try t playing 1080p video uh, actually we'll start with a 720p um, it's a Zivid let's try this one just to see how it's gonna work so I just clicked on it take a little bit to buffer up here this is streaming from a 100 meg hard connection so I do not have this on the wireless maybe a little slower with wireless I do have volume controls on the side of the uh, remote, so I can pick the volume up. I'm just going to skip ahead, so if I press the right arrow key, it'll skip ahead 30 seconds. Perfectly smooth video. If I do the up arrow, it's going to skip ahead 10 minutes. Perfectly smooth, but that's expected.
to stop that. So the remote actually does not have stop, play, pause, etc. on it, which kind of stinks. But you have to use the OK button and bring up a menu. Now it's just tip standard IR, so you could use a Harmony, which I plan on doing. This is just the, the default remote, pretty small. So let's go find a 1080p. I've got one in mind. Here is Spaceballs. This is actually Blu-ray RIP 1080p DTS. I'm just going to start that from the beginning. So again, 1080p video. Looks like it took about four seconds to buffer up. A little bit of stuttering when it first starts playing. But after that, pretty much super smooth. Pretty impressive for a little A7 ARM processor and a Malibu 400. Oh, there's a little bit of skip. So again, the press right button, it's going to skip ahead 30 seconds. Press the up button, 10 minutes. A little bit of rebuffering once you skip. It takes about 4 or 5 seconds, and everything gets back into, into sync. Still better than a fast forward. Again, pretty, pretty smooth video. No noticeable lag or anything. So it's not going to win any awards for performance, but for $115, I don't think you can get a better XBMC experience. I played around with the live TV option, which is now available on Frodo built-in XBMC, and I actually couldn't get it to work. Uh, I've always struggled with that feature. It just requires a lot more setup than uh, most of the other live TV configurations and also pretty much anything else in XBMC. So it definitely seems like Windows Media Center is still the way to go for live TV. Uh, but I'm sure if I played around with it with an extra hour or so, I could probably uh, get live TV streaming from my HD home run. But for now, um, for streaming pre-downloaded content uh, from a network drive or a USB drive or uh, streaming Netflix or Amazon you know, from the internet uh, as well as some other third-party streaming channels, uh, seems like the POS Zeos is, is probably the cheapest way to go uh, for full-blown Linux-based XBMC.